According to an old Korean proverb, a habit you have at three years old will stay with you until you are 80 years old. This proverb speaks to how important it is to cultivate good life habits when you are young. Once you form a bad habit when you are young, it's really difficult to fix it later in life. I would like to say that my childhood was filled with happy memories. I hung out with friends at the playground every single day, building sand castles and riding the slide hundreds of times over. I wrapped myself with a cozy blanket after dinner, watching soap operas and quiz shows with my nanny in the living room. I went to the department store with my parents each weekend, buying toy cars and stickers that eventually filled up entire drawers. However, for all the happy memories that I have, I also have this habitual sense of pressure to excel over others, which seemingly started before I can even remember. I don't know when it began, but it has been simply expected of me to get an A in everything I do. This expectation soon became an internal obsession, this pursuit of academic achievement devouring everything else in my life. I have one poignant memory from fourth grade. I took this midterm exam in math and got a score of 48 out of 100 on it. As I was already so accustomed to measuring my life success on the test scores and grades I received, I felt like a total, utter failure after seeing that grade. Other details of how I dealt with that escaped my memory but I remember going through quite an emotionally traumatic ordeal by myself. As I went through the rest of elementary school and middle school, this dangerous habit of prioritizing academic achievement over everything else made me miss out on so many things. Unnecessarily stressing myself over every small assignment and test score, I did not uh, keep in mind the social aspects which fell into the back of my mind. In the quest to check all the quote-unquote right boxes, I was unable to develop the right social skills and emotional intelligence alongside of my peers. Moving to the States, I thought I would be able to drop this obsessive habit. I thought I would be able to start, start my life anew in a way, in a more social and normal way. But no, habits were way stronger than I thought. Under the ultimate goal of getting into a prestigious college, I resorted to checking boxes once again. Once again, my extremely goal-centric attitude in life drove people away from me. I treated people around me poorly, often acting arrogant and criticizing others for the mistakes I have made. I tried to win 100% of the arguments without much interest in actually getting to know the person or their argument. Then came the onset of the college application season, a time period often considered most stressful in anyone's high school career. However, somewhat ironically, this past college application season has provided me with a vital opportunity to do some much needed candid self-examination. In a way, I got the chance to reevaluate my life in that time. Here's what I found out. I was excelling in certain parts of life, test scores, GPA, extracurriculars, things like that. However, I was failing hard in other parts of life. Things like understanding others' emotions, learning how to talk to people, or something as simple as having fun. So, after I submitted all of my applications, I started playing catch-up. Since last December, I've been lucky enough to find an online community of supportive friends and started talking to them on voice chat each day. I know talking to friends for a couple hours a day might sound pretty normal for some of you. But for me, it opened up a whole new world. Instead of being stuck in my head, watching pointless YouTube videos for hours on end, 
I got to make new friends and exchanged uh, my thoughts with theirs. I learned how to not just talk about myself, but be genuinely curious about what other people think. Using what I learned from talking to friends in that online group, I also started talking to my in real life friends a bit more. I even talked to someone pretty extensively to the point where we're connecting at a level just beyond simple friendship. I feel both grateful and proud about that one. I'm not saying that shedding my age-old habit is all done and I live ha happily ever after. It's certainly a work in progress. I know I have ways to go until I match the level of emotional maturity of a lot of my peers. I'm reading a book on how to get friends. Seriously. <laughs> And <laughs> I'm continuing to talk to my friends. Best of all, I've stopped being all paranoid about my grades. These past few months just feel like a dream to me. If my happiness level was here back in December, then now it's way up here. Thank you. It's not because I got into a school I like or anything like that. I stopped my desperate chase for arbitrary achievements, and instead, I'm focusing on my happiness. I'm focusing on what makes me happy. So, as I go forward in life, to college, the military, and my career, I will still work hard. However, I'll also keep in mind that social and emotional success is just as important as success measured in numbers. And to all of you, both in the audience and in Zoom, I just want to say, learn from my mistakes. Don't fixate on a metric, a school, or any single goal, and blindly chase it like your life depends on it. I tried it, I bought into the myth, and it did not bring me happiness. You are worth so much more than a number, a college acceptance, or perceived success in the narrow field. Mom, I truly appreciate all you have done for me. For the last three years, you had to move and adjust to this new country, balance a full-time job at 3M, and keep me alive at the same time. <laughs> Dad, thank you for always having my back and being willing to stay in Korea all by yourself. I'm counting the days until I get to see you next. Thank you, Lorena, for being such an amazing and supportive friend. Drew, I still remember the first awkward encounter we had in Lansing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we pulled it off as two co, co presidents this year. And to everyone else, thank you so much for supporting my journey through these past three years. I would not be where I am without you all. Thank you.